Good morning, everybody. I was the second person into the shop this morning, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I've got a little project I'm working on right now, so I thought I would bring you guys along. Let's make some custom vice jaws for our fifth axis vices. So these guys right here, fifth axis, uh, they make a nice vice, quite nice. I've got two of them mounted in the current. I use them, I, I don't want to say all the time, but I use them quite a lot for doing clamps and fixtures and little, lots of little stuff. I don't use them for production, but I need, I need to make stuff. So I use these for that. Um, the thing is, I often need to hold round material, and holding round material in a, a vice jaw doesn't always work. Um, so what I've ended up having to do, like these are my lock bar insert pallets. How do I hold this material to do the dovetail op in the square vice jaws? Uh, it doesn't work. So what I ended up doing is I made these guys a while ago, um, which holds the material quite nicely, two of those. And then I was like, you know, that works pretty good. So I bought a bunch of material to make other kinds of jaws. I made this jaw, two of these, to hold the, um, the Aroa base pallets right there. Do I have a blank one? I don't have a blank one in the machine, but you kind of see, because uh, when I'm doing the tombstones and stuff, I need to be able to drill a bolt pattern into the pallet, sometimes even hold them upside down. Um, so these guys work really good for that. It's kind of like a V slash round jaw put together, spaced specifically for the um, 148 millimeter diameter of that guy. So yeah, so I've got those two jaws, and now I'm gonna make a jaw to hold, uh, I think it'll go half inch to um, two inch material, because I've got, well, I've got this one and a half inch piece of Delrin that I'll use for something, but um, what I've really got is this guy. This is a piece of acrylic, one and a half inch diameter, that is like amazingly clear and just really cool to look at. I, I brought it home to show my kids because it's like, it's just really cool. Um, anyway, how do I hold this in a vise that just goes like this? Uh, and keep it kind of centered. So, yeah, for this project, which will be another video coming up very soon, because once I have the vice jaws, I can actually work on this project, then uh, I'll show more of that and what that is for. So, what we got here, starting out with some, uh, I've been using 4140 steel for lots of my fixtures and clamps and stuff. Works really good. This guy's like one and a half by three and a half by inch and a quarter, I think. Um, so I had a bunch of these cut up, and uh, let's mount one up and do it. So if you're doing kind of serial production or making lots of parts and you have an op one and an op two, having the two vices with a pallet changing system works amazing for that. That's not exactly what I'm doing here. I kind of, my, my op one is a dovetail op. So you can see I cut the dovetails into the top, and the dovetails are used to be gripped by these um, grippers on the top of the jaw, either inside or outside. And then I also faced, uh, not faced, uh, profiled around the outside to kind of pre-remove a bunch of the material and get the size that I need. It helps for the second op here. So this is mounted by the dovetails in the second op. And then this um, profiled finish now goes all the way down to the vice jaw so that when I do profile around, I don't have to kiss the vice jaw with my um, end mill, I can go like this. And there might be a little blend line, but who cares? For what I'm doing, it don't matter. So yeah, I'm gonna mount a piece of material, show you guys a couple little tricks, show you what this thing's all about, and uh, let's make one. I ha I've only made op one, I have not made op two yet, so I think the code is good. It'll be interesting to, uh, to prove that out. All right. Get this thing loosened up a little bit. Okay, so this is a 3D printed uh, spacer that is more or less exactly half an inch thick because sometimes I need to space the material up half an inch. I also have a one inch thick, and but I use the half inch ones for most things. And then uh, it just works really, really well. Okay, so I'll put my half inch spacer in, put my material in, because it's not perfectly square, I gotta make sure I'm putting it in kind of the same way. Okay, cut sides on the front to back. 
center the spacer roughly and then I have to make sure I center the material left to right uh, so that it aligns perfectly because I'm not coming in and probing it I'm assuming the setup is right so I make sure the setup is right so what I've been doing to center the piece it's it's not my favorite method but it's working um, using my calipers using the bottom like stick out part of it and I just without moving the piece I gently hit one side and then I bring it over to the other side without moving it and I can kind of tell if it's super close or not and then I can tap the piece in left to right so now it's super close and then uh, cinch it down by hand and then I'll torque it down and then it's ready to rock and then this thing it lifted up obviously just a little bit this thing can stay in there um, it's not coming out or anything and uh, it works great last night I had a run going making rasp parts and a 65 thou reamer carbide reamer broke so tool breakage detection caught it um, but then it was not able to finish the blades or the handles or anything that's pretty early in the process so I've got one pallet that didn't finish um, I do have two pallets that did finish so that's good but let us call pallet 14 and get this thing rocking show you guys how to cut the dovetails real quick uh, I've been working on something for the past week that I'm not going to get into super detail about but this is basically it's called a table file it's a spreadsheet essentially and I have columns called order 1 to 80 status 1 is ready 1000 is complete uh, do I want to do a wash down and do I want to do a wash down with a change to an empty pallet a pallet zero to wash everything out and if I want to run pallet 14, which I do right now, I change it to a status of one, and I want to wash down both times, and I just run it. And it works. It works so good. Okay, door opens. It's gonna grab that pallet. Comes in, little grippers grip it down. This unlocks, lifts it up, pulls it back, puts it back where it got it from in, pal in spot number nine. Sets it down gently, lets go, pulls back, goes down to pallet 14. I love this thing. Gently sets it down. A little air blast comes out underneath where the feet are to blow off any little chips or coolant or things. And then I know it's done when the door closes and then it rotates to C0. Now the cycle will start. It'll do a tool change. There we go. It's going to call up my, I think it's a one inch uh, indexable face mill. So because the material thickness might vary, might change, I, I always cut like high at first. I always cut spring passes. Ah, spindle intake required. Uh, it didn't need this like 20 minutes ago. So there's a timer that um, every six hours, I think it requires a spindle warm up before you can continue. And the machine's been off. It's like 8.30 in the morning, but it's been off uh, because of the alarm last night for the past six hours. I must have just passed that timer because I checked like 20 minutes ago. Anyway, let me do a spindle warm up. Internal stop. Just hit yes. It'll change to the warm up tool, which is tool number one. It's got to put away the other tool that it had pre called. Now it calls tool number one. There we go. Tool change. Spindle will turn on. There we go starts at a measly 21,000 RPM, goes for three minutes. Be right back. Spindle warm up complete. Let's open the code again. There's no real rewind in Heidenhain, um, so you just have to open the code again. No big deal. Run it. I'm gonna slow it down just because I've only done this once or twice. Turn the coolant off so you can see. It is clearly air cutting for the first pass. I don't care. I will take the extra few minutes uh, to know that I'm not overloading it due to a super thick material. How much do we even have here? Not much. 
Actually, maybe that's a little bit. Who cares? A couple passes, I walk away, I do something else. It just works. All right, we switched to a 3.8 Lakeshore uh, bull nose four flute tool. And I turned off the coolant and slowed it down. Oh yeah, that gets real close to the jaws. Okay, back to 100%. Air cutting a little bit. What are we at? 3,000 RPM, 25 inches per minute. I don't run things super aggressively. I don't care. I'll just take the time. <laughs> I know some people like to push it balls to the walls. I don't care. I just want to make good parts. And this machine's not a, you know, 50 horsepower beast. So, light and fast. And this isn't even that fast, but who cares? Yeah, so that's just gonna do that for a little while. I turned the coolant back on. One of the main benefits to coolant, I mean, there's a lot, but it washes the chips away. So if you don't recut the chip, because especially with steels and the high performance alloys, stainless titanium, things like that, um, the chips actually can get like hotter and more brittle over time like not over time but after they're cut so if you're recutting that then you're putting a hardened piece of steel against the cutting edge and it's it's weird you know i like to think like i'm the end mill if i'm an end mill and i'm cutting you know i'm, I'm this sharp and i'm cutting fresh material all the time i'm pretty happy but if you start throwing sand and gravel in my way i'm not going to be as happy so wash those chips away, give it the cooling of the coolant, give it the lubrication of the coolant, um, or if you're cutting steel, an air blast works pretty much just as well. I just don't do that very much. So just cool it, blast it. Another tool change, what do we got here? Quarter inch five flutes. This is roughing out the dovetail, and then the dovetail end mill will come in and uh, cut those dovetails. I don't do a lot of dovetail prep, but I know some shops and some guys, some of my friends, do like hundreds a day. So they want those cycle times down to as short as possible. They will buy dedicated machines just to cut dovetails. Um, it's really interesting to do that. Or they'll buy like the Lang makes a stamping machine that will, you don't need to dovetail, it just it hydraulically stamps little grippers into the side of the part. That works too, this works for me. I just cut it slow and it just works. Okay, we're on the last tool here. This is our AB Tools dovetail cutter. Just coming in there each side, cutting away. Okay, if my pallet management software, which I just finished up and tested yesterday, if it works properly, this should stop the cycle. You can see, I can see the cursor is right there, almost done. It should stop the cycle and initiate the wash down procedure. And I'll show you guys how that works. Almost done. Almost there. There we go. Okay, it's gonna change to my wash down tool. Now I came up with this wash down program which clears all of my tools, all of my pallets, all my tombstones, everything. Spins the sea back and forth while blasting the coolant. And then turns it, uh, what is that, 110 degrees negative. Let's it drip dry for 30 seconds. And then it does the spinny again and spins it off. And it, they come off pretty clean, clean enough. Gets most of the coolant off, most of the chips off. And it works well. And then it's going to change, because we set the setting, it's going to change to the empty pallet, pallet zero. And then uh, do the same thing. There we go. Yeah, you can see a lot of coolant flying off. This is as fast as I can spin it. Which I wish I could go like way faster just for this purpose, but this is plenty. This is fine. Almost done.
The cool thing with changing to pallet zero is it's faster because you don't have to grab the next pallet. You just, once this one clears the door, the door will close. See? And then same thing again. Because I find chips and little junky stuff gets under there. Especially when I switch to my, my small pallets. Because these don't have the ceiling ring on the bottom. So I just found doing the pallet zero wash down is the most reliable way to keep chips out. So most of the coolant is off. There's still a little bit of light, fluffy coolant. Okay, that's what we just did. So next, we're gonna test this. I have the coat already. I'll show you the cam too. In Fusion 360, we have basically our setup right here. If you toggle to this setup, you can see the dovetail setup with the ops we just did. Facing, profiling, dovetail contour, etc. And then we go to this. So we've mounted it now. You can see how the dovetails work. They grip really good. Sometimes I will draw sketches like this guy to define like my facing zone so that I don't face the jaws. So first thing is that I do an adaptive, I go around the outside, finish profile. Um, from this direction, I do an adaptive to get the V away. Face that side, staying away from the vice jaw, that's what the custom boundary is for. Uh, face the other side, face the top V side, I'm going to take an eighth inch end mill and I'm going to slot away. Now Fusion has this, I'm going to hide this sketch because it's getting in my way. Fusion has this new feature, new-ish, where you can see the stock in process just by clicking on each operation, which is great. So you want to cut the V, stock's away. You can see how much stock is left. Make the stock a little bit transparent. And then you come in with that slot and you can see what I just took away. So I'm slotting it would just step down, step down, and then I'm gonna step over one thou, finish that wall, step over one thou, finish that wall. Uh, you can see I'm overcutting a little bit, I don't care. And then I'm tilting it in this direction, so the vise will be, where's my X? Yeah, Actually, yeah, so it's gonna tilt this way, because the spindle stays up and down. So it's gonna go this way, and then it's gonna tilt this way, and face that little section, and then, Spot the holes, drill the holes, big drill the holes, all the way through. Bore the little locating holes for the pins. Finish those. Bore the big uh, screw heads. Bore those, finish those. Bunch of chamfers everywhere. Chamfer, 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 chamfer. And that's cool. That's about it. So I export that. I run it through Camplete. Yeah, I still have it here hide the enclosure. Camp Lead's pretty sweet. I got the whole Kern modeled up and I can hide various parts of it depending on what you want to see. This is crash avoidance and post. Rewind it all the way so it literally not only shows you what's going on but uh, it'll tell you if it's doing something it doesn't like. When I was making these ones I kind of came up with a great idea to leave the dovetail on a side that I don't care about. And it actually works really, really, really well. Sometimes, most of the time, you want to cut off the dovetail because it looks dumb and, and you don't want that on a finished part. To me, this is a tool, it's not a finished part. It just, it needs to work. And why would I set it up for a third op to cut that dovetail off when I, I don't need to? So I just, I placed it on the back that's out of the way. It's not gonna interfere. I still have a flat plane here because uh, I put a little relief there and it's, it's kind of cool and then if I ever have to dovetail it again to mount it for whatever reason uh, I can do that but it's just easier okay so this pallet management software I can't begin to tell you guys how excited I am about it just for me personally I don't even need to share with you guys but for me it's exactly what I've wanted ever since wanting to buy this current and now I have it so I'm not gonna get into too much detail because uh, I don't want to. But basically I bring up the table file again. I go to pallet 12, which is the next one we're gonna run. Go to one, so it's now active. And then I gotta open file number 12 because I have a different file for each 
uh, each palette, I have 80 files, you know, 1.h, 2.h, 12.h, and then I'm gonna edit, instead of running the dovetail ops, I'm going to run, what did I call it here, softjaw? I forget, I need to look closely, but I will choose, in, in 12.h, I will choose the file that it's gonna run, and then I run it, and it works great. There it is, it's the obvious one. Fifth Axis Vice V552, Softjust. I, I love to name my programs. You can't have spaces when you do multiple like subroutines and stuff, but I, I name them so I know exactly what I'm, do, what I'm doing. Um, Softjust V from dovetailed stock, so it means it's already been dovetailed. These are the rough dimensions, just so I know if I'm doing the right thing. Push OK, it put it into here, call program, direct path to that program, good to go. Uh, this is my 12.h. I've just got basic stuff in the beginning. Go to Z home, XY home, BC home, call the palette number based on the variable from the spreadsheet, from the table, and then edit this line, edit this line. So that's the only thing I'm editing ever. And then some of the wash down logic is down here. So if I've chosen it in the table file, um, it runs the wash down. But all I need to do every time is just that. This program is now dedicated to position number 12 until I change it next time. And let's hit go. And then I run, this is my palette management like main program. Basically I don't, I don't change this. I don't need to edit it for any reason um, once it's settled. I just hit start. So it goes through, it thinks for a second, it doesn't take too long, crunches through, looks for all the palettes that I'm running, and it finds 12, and then it starts calling number 12. Okay, but I'm going to um, not hold the camera while I run this, because I don't trust it a million percent yet. I'm sure it's fine, I've run through camp lead, I've done everything, but I make mistakes. Go! Profiling the outside. It's funny watching this and showing you guys and like feeling embarrassed how slow it is. I know I could go way faster. But that's not... I don't need to. It's not production. I'm just making a thing. Like my, my speeds and feeds and my tip loads are decent. They're just not like super aggressive. This part here, the B axis is tilted to negative 90 degrees. We're cutting that V channel in the end of the part so that I can see through the coolant here. Now one thing I noticed right away is it's, it's cutting, 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 and then retracting. Um, there's a setting where you can make the retracts go really fast. But again, I don't care. But it is fun to play with the tool paths and to get it to be optimized and do what you want and be fast and efficient. Might squeal at the end depending on how small I made it. No, it's good. Finish pass. Okay, I paused it. I brought in that eighth inch four flute flat. Let's see how it likes stepping down with no coolant. So the first pass is pretty light. I might turn the coolant back on here. I can see a lot of chips piling up at the bottom. Which is not good for a slotting operation. Now we have the 30 degree tilt. Bring it down slowly. So I've just got my one hand on the feed right here. I can turn the coolant off from here. It's close. Oh yeah. Uh, light finish pass, it should retract up to the top corner. Oh, it rotated 180. Okay, I thought it might tilt this way. Um, perfect. This tool here is a five millimeter through coolant drill. So instead of having coolant blast from the outside, it goes through the tip of the tool. So as I progress it forward, there we go. 
So it's going through the tool and through the side of the collet a little bit and coming down the side flutes to wash the chips and the bird's nests off. And this thing is an absolute beast. Done. It's fast. And then I'm doing a breakage detection here. Can't see. Make sure it's still there. Check it's good. Change, go. All right, it has done pallet change to pallet zero. Placed it back here where it belongs. It looks done. Looking pretty good. A couple little extra swirlies in the finish right there. Uh, there's ways around that. The tool is probably getting pretty chunky dead too. I use that tool for lots of beater, rougher stuff. Nice little chamfers on the edges here. I'm pretty happy with that. So I decided to go with, uh, I think, 30 degree angle on each side, as opposed to my default mentality was 45. Um, but 45 gives your grip range not a lot of wiggle room. So with the 30 degree, I figured out I'm able to do as small as a half inch diameter, which is like basically the size of my finger, and still be gripped by both sides, or up to a two inch circle, which would be two inch, two inch, those are two and a half. I've got a two inch here somewhere. Um, yeah, so my inch and a half um, acrylic will be perfect. So I'm gonna pull that off, inspect it properly, and then if it's good, I'm gonna run this one. It looks really, really good. If I were running production on these, I would uh, probably tweak a couple little things, like, let's see. There's a burr that's forming here across this whole little step. Uh, I don't care, I'll just bust that off with the scotch bread wheel. Same on this side. But otherwise, all the chamfered holes turned out really nice. Also, the inside of the V didn't get chamfered. Um, I guess I just chose not to do it, so we got a little flappy burr down there. Not a big deal, but these these chamfered really nice. And yeah, and as I said, leave the dovetail on the bottom. Who cares? It mounts to the fifth axis vise just like that. All right, let's make a second one. Continuing, these screws come right out. Two. These jaws come right off. Just like so. These are heat treated, hardened, surface ground, really nice. Mine are not, but I don't care. Now I think my holes might be a little undersized. Let's see if they fit. Nah, messed up. That's okay, I can ream them out real quick. Yeah, the holes are too tight. Even just does one side fit? Not really, they're so close. They're like less than a thou undersized. Okay, I will ream those out and they should fit now. Quick update on this guy, the MyJet filter that I put a video out a couple weeks ago. Uh, I added a bigger hose to it, quarter inch flexible, flexzilla. Uh, I get way more airflow into it now. It works way better. It's pretty great now. So that is what I blow my parts off into. Yes. Easy peasy. Okay. So the jaws are installed. I have a two inch slug of 4140 here. It fits like a glove. Um, the corners of the V are, are hitting the dovetail, not the taper flats, but that's fine for what I need. I just, I just need it to hold the flat centered and so I can put a dovetail on top and then do whatever I need to after that with it. So that's kind of my max for these jaws is two inch. Then I can hold the one and a half inch super clear acrylic and one inch stuff and half inch stuff and it'll be good. This will be a good uh, 
extra thing to add to my inventory. So uh, they worked really well. All right. Now I can move on to the project that will actually use that clear. Yes, yes, that's going to be cool. I'm really excited for that video. I've wanted this this tool forever. Game changer. So stay tuned for that video. Thanks for watching this one. See you guys next time.